How's it going? Fucking fantastic, Josh. It's a beautiful Tuesday. Cheers. What's it like? What's the weather like there? Beautiful. Yeah, fucking great. It's, it's, it's grey. Yeah. Where's that one unemployed guy? Oh, I yeah, where is he? I don't know. He must have, a, he must have gotten a job down at the Jizz Mopper or a Fluffer down at the old porn store. Yeah. I don't know. Down Sainsbury's. Oh, we've got three yeah. unemployed. Here we go. Oh, yeah, nice. Three unemployed sados. Be yeah, a lovely day here. Been out for a cycle this morning. Been out for a ride. Uh, very nice. Smiling at people, just waving, smiling, feeling joy, feeling the wind in my beard. It was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, you got a bit of a beard. That's a new look. I've never grown a beard before, so I'm experimenting with masculinity and growing a beard. And there's this weird little bald spot here. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, just, it's oh, just yeah, like yeah. baby soft, like a baby's took us. It just it will not. No hair has ever grown there. So, yeah, a bit patchy. I'm not, I'm not very masculine. I, mean, I think most people who have followed my career will know that I'm not the most masculine of blokes. Um, yeah. Mine doesn't really like. I can't get. I can't get it to like fully connect here. So I just, you know, I'm not like fuck Beppe from EastEnders. I don't know if you get yeah. that reference, but uh... I'm looking a bit ratty and scummy. Um, but you know, bring it on. This is, this is a scummy show. So yeah. yeah. So what are we up to today, Josh? We're going to be talking about funny pages. I finally watched funny pages. Now you watched this when it came out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think I. Uh... Probably, yeah, the week it came out. I loved yeah. it. Me too. Spoiler alert, I loved it. This is a 2022 film directed by, in the words of Jimmy Brown, the young masturbator from The Squid and the Whale, the Noah Baumbach film. Um, I didn't know that. Apparently Owen Klein, the director, was acting a little bit when he was a teen and he was masturbating in um, Noah Baumbach films. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I don't like that movie. Squid and the Whale, not not a favourite, but uh, Funny Pages, yeah, I give Funny Pages five stars. I love that movie. Five? I give it four and a half. Uh, four yeah, yeah. and a half stars. Uh, well, I'm out of six. I'm doing it out of six. So, uh, oh, shit, really? Okay. <laughs> we need to talk about our rating system before we do this stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're jumping right to the star ratings. Uh, four and a half out of five and five out of six from Josh. Three thumbs up and five stars, that's what I say. But yeah, I'd been meaning to watch this for a long time. Um, you know, it came out last year. It was distributed by A24. It was at select cinemas. You could rent it on Amazon or whatever. You know, but I refused to do digital rentals. I didn't make it to the cinema. I refused to pay money for an ethereal, you know, digital thing that I can't own. Um, so I, I waited for the DVD release, which never came, except I, I ponied up and I bought a, a European one. You can see the little red 18 on there. 18. This is a Curzon release. This is yeah, European. Uh, yeah, no no listing for an American one. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I thought Criterion had put it out or the you know, A24 themselves or whatever, however it works. Um, not an expert on DVD, Blu-ray releasing. Yeah. But yeah, I ponied up. I finally watched it last Friday and I was blown away. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought it was like... Um... Felt like a realistic portrayal. That that was a criticism I saw the most was it was unrealistic, which I didn't. I never understood that criticism. Um, so, uh, I, I saw that people said like one of the things I saw people saying like he wouldn't have been um, he wouldn't the kid wouldn't have been excited by meeting the image art the image guy. Mm. Which I think it, which it, it, that didn't make sense to me. I saw that about three different people saying that, but it, it didn't make sense to me. I thought um, actually like. Uh, at that age, you would have been excited to meet anybody in comments. Yes. Yeah. I, I agree because I, I watched the trailers and I was, you know, read about the movie before it came out and I was excited about it. I was like, image, like an underground type alternative kid wouldn't give a fuck about image. Um, but watching the movie, he just, yeah, he wanted to glom on to any semblance of professionalism. He just wanted to be linked up with anyone who was, you know, tacitly involved you know in the loosest way with the scene um and i found it incredibly realistic the whole movie um it, it flashed me back to being a kid um yeah one of the scenes at the end like the, the character wallace the the crazy guy that worked for image that the kid's desperate to hang out with and steals money from his mother to pay him for lessons to lure him to his house so he can just hang out with him and the the, the guy's yelling at 
the main kid and his friend, or Robert and Miles, was yelling at these two kids and just saying, like, you're not artists, you're failures, blah, blah, blah. But it made me flash back to when I was a kid and just, like, when I identified as a cartoonist. Like, I think I was 14 and I was like, I'm a cartoonist. I'm a cartoonist. Like, it was just, it was what I wanted to do. I'd been self-publishing for, like, six years at that point since I was eight. And I just, I just, I just flashed back to stalking around the schoolyard with my scummy friends and just, like, identifying as a cartoonist like i am a cartoonist and these kids in this movie were reminded me so much of myself uh, as a kid yeah you think uh out of the two kids you have um the main character who's more like you know he's like traditional cartoonist or whatever yeah. and you have the kind of arty friend making like yeah. funky experimental stuff did you like yeah. get, like did you identify with like uh that kid at any point the the, the, the wanky uh, art guy no, I, I identify with Robert, the main kid um, who could draw better because um, yeah. I had friends that couldn't draw as well. And I felt sorry for Miles in the movie, the long haired kid who I think yeah. was clearly in love with Robert. There was a scene outside the school where he longingly like watched Robert walk away and just he really obviously wanted to impress, you know, he's bringing his comics in to show Robert. And, like, oh, and they just seemed, you know, he gave him the back rub at the end as well. He was like uncomfortably touching him and, and Robert said, yeah. Ugh. but he clearly seemed in love with, with the other kid. And, um, and I identify with Robert being really mean to Miles. Like I remember just like, just when you've got one friend as a kid and you just, if you're a fucking cunt to them, like, cause you're just in the power position. And I had it reversed as well. My friend Luke used to be horrible to me and like yell at me and like, you know, I, I want to go home. And he's like, Oh, well, you can't have a lift home for my mum." It's like you can fucking walk home and I don't have to walk home like a three hour walk and stuff. And just, yeah, the, the power plays that kids make and then, you know, the prickishness. And yeah, Luke was my cartooning buddy when I was a kid. And it really reminded me of that dynamic. Um, yeah, it was very realistic. And, and the squalid apartment, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Well. Incredible. I think uh, they mentioned that that's in Trenton, New Jersey, which on the way to New York before I had stopped in Trenton, New Jersey, and it is it's horrible, it's sketchy. <laughs> even I just was in the train station and it was like, I didn't even use the, the toilet there. There was like five people outside the toilet. I was like, no, nah, I'm going to hold it in until I get home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that smelly apartment, that hot, smelly apartment full of weird, masturbating old men reminded me of my youth as well because... You know, when I was 13, I used to hang out with all these 21-year-olds down the road that got me into alternative comics. And Barry the hippie, the guy who lived on a bus, used to come and stay at their house. And I remember once they found a bunch of Jason's, like, porno mags all glued together with semen, like, stuffed under the spare bed. And Barry the hippie had, like, jizzed all over all the porn and then, like, stuffed it and hidden it away. And uh, Jason was very upset. These were very collectible Playboy editions. Um but yeah, no, it's, it's just very much my upbringing in Tasmania, just like squalid comics. Because, um, yeah, it was it was fantastic. I, I was I was ensconced. The cinematography was good. Very scuzzy movie. Highly recommended. Yeah, it had that. It felt like um, like another criticism I saw was like, about the t like the uh, like the nineties feel of it. But it felt legitimately like a Miramax kind of nineties uh, movie. Like I really like that vibe of it. I, I yeah I. I, I... You know, I, I thought it was maybe a period piece when I saw the trailers, but it to me it just felt drenched in poverty. Like it felt modern, but it was just like the reality of poor people, just like you yeah. know, struggling along. And so I found it quite contemporary, but just really squalid, fucking poor people. Um, Amazing faces. Like I don't know, I don't know who like who was cast in that movie, but everybody in that movie has like such an amazing face. Yeah. Well, Wallace had like a weird hair lip or something going on like that. That actor was great. And yeah. the old Santa Claus hat guy and just, yeah, the, the guys in the sweaty house, just just everyone. The, the guy with the weird hair that worked at the legal office, like, fucking and then that's hell. Poor scene. What's, uh, it's been a while since I've seen it, but there's like a scene in a like pharmacy. Um, CVS yeah. or something. I don't know. Everybody Walgreens, just, baby. Amazing faces, yeah. Yeah, that old lady there with like fucked eyes and just this crazy <laughs> old lady. Yeah, really, just like I don't know, great level of casting, just getting these these weird, interesting heads. And, yeah, I was initially when the credits started to roll, I was initially like, oh, what the fuck? That's it? Like, oh, and I was kind of kind of like this wave of disappointment. But then, you know, spoilers, like the the main character Robert just sits there during the credits. All this fucked up stuff's happened, and he goes and opens up the the comic shop uh, and just sits there. 
as the credits rolled and he just sat there thinking, it just, I, I became satisfied with the ending. It was like, yeah, he's just all this fucked up stuff's happened. He's just sitting there processing it all. And he's just a kid. He's powerless. He was sitting there in silence. And it really sent me back to the past when I just felt fucking powerless as a kid and like pre-internet fucking Tasmania and just desperately trying to identify as a cartoonist and desperately wanting this thing and this, this wide open future. And then, yeah, I was pretty satisfied with the ending. I was like, what else could have happened really? Like, yeah, was, fucked up shit happened and he just was processing it. And, and the main character would have gone on to draw comics. I have no doubt that that character was probably a lifer like me. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, he was, he's a cartoonist. He was a, he's a cartoonist. Yeah. I think mean, a great movie. Uh, yeah yeah hats off to owen klein the uh the young masturbator from the squid and the whale um yeah great great job I, I need to kind of watch that movie now i want to see his uh his scene in there i wonder if it compares to the the young masturbator at the end of happiness uh that the famous uh jizzing on the the hotel uh bars and it drips down the dog eats the semen and, mwah, incredible scene incredible yeah. Well, I did find this quite Salonzian as well. It, it scratched that Salonzian itch for me. It felt like, you know, Welcome to the Dollhouse, just like, you know, sort of scummy yeah. and powerful. Yeah, yeah. I uh, bring, it up to, bring it up to six stars now, I remember. Six out of six? Yeah, six out of six. Yeah, four, out, four and a half out of five for me still. It's, you know, it's, yeah, it's not, it wasn't perfect but yeah but i can't really think of anything i completely disagreed with I, i've seen people criticize the start like the first three minutes or five minutes of the movie where the art teacher gets impaled um yeah i, I didn't you know it's just an accident that happened i didn't find it to be overwrought or silly or too high and weird or i don't know an accident happened accidents happen in life um, yeah all, all of the criticism i'd heard i was just oh fuck off it's fine yeah <laughs> it was great yeah, I think um, yeah, like I just kept like I kept seeing people saying like this isn't what would happen. This is like if you if a kid decided to become a cartoonist, this isn't what they'd do. You know that they would uh they would build a pitch and and, and send it to uh, yeah. you know Oni Press or something. It's like yeah, maybe check the bank accounts of these cartoonists and their daddies and mummies before you listen to their yeah. opinions. Because to me, it was a very realistic portrayal of a young poverty. You know, it's yeah. like. Yeah, young poverty child. Just, mm -hmm. Well, he had posh parents in it, actually. I mean, he had these the fucking Princeton parents. He was off to Princeton, so I guess he was a privileged little plum mouth sod in the movie. He's, yeah. you know, he's trust trust punk. He was a trust punk, so fuck him, actually. <laughs> don't identify with him. But I don't know. He put his money where his plum mouth was, and he and he went off and lived with those squalid masturbators. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good uh, stuff. Generally, like. Uh... I couldn't stop talking about that movie when I, after I watched it. It was, uh, yeah, one of my favourites of the year. Of last year, I don't, remember, I don't remember when I watched it, but... Yeah, 2022 it was. It was just about a year ago, I guess, it came out. Um, yeah, it took me forever to watch the bloody thing, but I'm slow. I buy so many movies and I just don't watch them. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It completely, completely changed tack, Josh. Have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? Uh, wait, there's a third movie of that. Yeah, comic book movies, Josh. If we watch Funny Pages, now it's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 on the uh, on the 4K Ultra HD. Is Chris I Pratt that one? Of course he is, the Prattsman. I love, I love old Pratty. He's great. Um, yeah, no, I, I did genuinely love this. Uh, once more with feeling, it says on the sticker. It may shock people to realise that I actually do love the Marvel movies. Well, I did before they got really shit. I even liked Shang-Chi, um, but gosh, they've been bad recently. They've really fallen off a fucking cliff quality-wise. Um, but yeah, enjoyed this. I actually legitimately, I, I cry at the end of the second volume when Yondu dies. I, I cry every time. And, and yeah, this didn't disappoint. This was probably the last great Marvel movie or last tolerable Marvel movie before it all just goes down the toilet. Yeah. Maybe in 10 years they can bring it back and do a soft reboot and start writing it well again. But yeah, I enjoyed this. Um, I haven't, I, I'm yet to see a single Marvel movie, so maybe, uh, maybe I'll watch one and then we can talk about it here. Fucking hell, you've never watched a single Marvel movie? No. Wow, I used to watch them all on planes. Um, you know, yeah. I was traveling a lot, traveling cartoonists, so I was like, oh, well, I'll deign to watch this sh schlocky garbage on the plane, but I actually grew to love them. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, you should watch Iron Man or something. Maybe we can both like do a watching of of, um, of Iron yeah. Man. I think from two thousand eight. I think that was the start of it all, pretty much. Um, Robert yeah, Downey yeah. Syndrome Junior. Sorry, Robert Downey Junior. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Also, another one out of left field. Dread. Fucking amazing. Yeah. Have you seen this? Uh, is that Sylvester Stallone or is that the no, new? Oh, fuck off. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one in the cinemas. I, I, I was a Dread fan as a kid and I, I went and saw the Stallone one in the theatres and uh, I did not enjoy it. It wasn't very good. No, this has got Carl Urban as uh, as Dread. He's great. And yeah. it's, what's his name? It's, uh, it's oh, what's his name? It's Alex. What's his name? Alex Garland. It's the guy who wrote 28 Days Later and, oh. and the Beach and all that stuff. And yeah, he, he wrote this, um, and it's actually a really good version of Dread. It's got Lena Headey from the Game of Thrones as the main villain. She's a big drug dealer, and very simple movie. It's like this big building complex, housing complex, gets locked down, and Dread and his partner have to make it from the bottom floor to the top floor and just make their way up. Very simple, but great action yeah. movie. You know, I don't mind a bit of an action movie. Not a big horror fan, but I'm quite an action fan. I actually, I loved this. It shocked me how much I loved it. And I went out and bought the, a cheap DVD of it so I can own it forever. Maybe I'll watch that one then. I think you'd probably enjoy it. It's a, it's a quality movie. Um, it's a shame it never got a sequel. I don't think it did too well. And um, uh, Yeah, anyway, Alex Garland, you know, he's pretty good. Yeah, I don't think I remember even anyone talking about that one. Yeah, I think it kind of went under the radar. Yeah. yeah. You know what I was watching recently? Uh, I was like, I'm going to give this another shot. And this has a comic book artist in it. It was Bored to Death. Oh, yes. Love that show. Yeah, yeah. I found it quite... Uh, I found um, Jason uh, what's it? Jason Schwartzman's character in that way more likable now than the first time I watched that. Yeah, Jonathan Ames was the writer of that. I think, you know, the main character that Schwartzman plays is Jonathan Ames, based on the real man. Um yeah, you got Ted Danson in there. Uh, I love Teddy Danson. I, I love the character yeah. that he plays in that, just like this rich man who's just slumming it and doing all these drugs yeah. and going through a bit of a crisis. And Yeah, no, I love Bored to Death. It's a great yeah, show. There is. Yeah, great. Yeah, just great stuff about um, addiction and just alcoholism and just being living in a fog and just sadness yeah. and creativity. Yeah, I really like Bored to Death. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised at how much I sort of like related a bit to that character like uh, as a uh, jason schwartzman one and uh like quite you know not my best qualities <laughs> yeah no me too 100 percent yeah i remember watching it like 10 years ago when it came out and really identifying with him quite a lot yeah there's some quite like things where the character's like uh, you know kind of a piece of shit and it's like ah oh, i've said that i've done yeah that. i just see him as a bit of a neurotic lost soul and you know a decent guy, but yeah, a bit of a fuck up. Not not the best in relationships, maybe, but yeah, in in his own head, living in a fog. Peace and Amy, it's a good one. Yeah, I've not watched it in a long time. I think I bought the DVD of it. No, I think the DVD is hard to find. I bought Mall Rats. I can I can still tolerate early Kevin Smith. Uh, the later stuff, fuck off. Um. <laughs> I watched that so many times when I first like uh, started getting into those movies, and. Um... I think a couple of years ago I watched, uh, tried to watch Chase and Amy, and it's like it's still fun, but it's it's hard. It's like it's cringe. It's like you, know, <laughs> you feel quite even if you're watching it by yourself, you feel quite embarrassing, you know, around yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you no. Know, if someone caught me watching Mole Rats or Chasing Amy, if my wife walked in and my child, like, oh fuck, I feel like I've been caught wanking or something. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah, embarrassing moments in that movie. Well, yeah, it's quite dated in terms of the way he like you know treats the girl that turns mm -hmm. out to be gay and like the the black guy in it like the yeah yeah isn't the black guy just like playing up the whole black power thing? He's just he's like isn't he a secret yeah, yeah. gay guy or something? But he's just yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. You see, as I guess he has like a comic about um some like you know black power guy and he uh you know he keeps yeah, yeah. the character up for conventions and stuff. But yeah, it's all a complete like front. Yeah, uh, you know, I like the dynamic between like Jason Lee and uh, Ben Affleck in that. And I like you know the tracer stuff. You're a tracer. Uh, it's kind of fun. Yeah, no, that, that's one of the first things I thought. The tracer Inca kind of arguing and stuff. Yeah. Jason Lee getting all angry. Um, Jason Affleck. Yeah, no, it's it's a good movie. I need to try and uh, track it down. It's, yeah, those early Kevin Smith films can be hard to track down. 
Yeah, I don't think they're on streaming or anything. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know Dogma is really hard to find. Dogma's not on streaming or something. Um, that was a Weinstein production, so maybe it's, you know, most of the Weinstein stuff still seems to be available, you know. So, you know, they cancel people these days and they just strip everything off, but I think a lot of the Weinstein movies are still available to watch, so. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a bit, a bit odd. But yeah, I remember Dogma being quite shit. I remember even when I was yeah. younger and I'd been quite a fan of that stuff, I was like, very disappointed by Dogma. Um, yeah yeah a bit too high concept or something <laughs> yeah i never liked that one. i never i was never that interested in that one it was pretty shit on it yeah like lanus morissette is god and just like i don't know george carlin playing some weird crazy preacher or something there's a poo monster in it i yeah but i do find jay and silent bob insufferable these days i just woof. yeah yeah did you ever watch that uh, that show, Comic Book Men, about the, the Jay and Silent Bob secret stash the store? Yeah, you know I have, especially the Jonathan Bayless episode. Oh, yeah? He's in it? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I've, I, used, I watched all the Comic Book Men, like, back... Oh, no, I don't know. I watched a bunch of it years ago, like, about three seasons worth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, love it. It's all right, wasn't it? But there was one of the Jonathan Bayless, that So Buttons guy, like walks into the comic shop and like, hi, I've got my independent comics. And they like talk to him and stuff, sort of in this infantilizing way, like, oh, Mr. Alternative, these little zines. And but, you know, I've seen that, you know, that was my first exposure to that guy. And I know Noah's worked with him and I could keep seeing him. I think he was the, the token sort of cis white guy doing a, a speech at the Ignats uh, a couple oh. of weeks ago. You know, they had to wheel on a, a token white guy and like, oh, we'll let you come in, I guess, you know, for diversity's sake. Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan yeah. Baylor, so buttons. Odd name for a comic. Worse than Goiter. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice guy. Right. Very nice. I like him. Yeah, he seems like a nice guy. I, I just flash back to my wife saying to you about like Goiter, like like a pus sack. Like a sack of, that's all people are going to think of, Josh, a, pu, a pus sack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not, don't love that name anymore, but. I tried to say to her, it's, it's, it's a reference to the Chris Morris show, Jam. It's, it's a very good reference. Yeah, well, I reckon only you and Roman Murdoch have ever gotten that. You know? yeah, probably. And I had to be told. I just, yeah, I, yeah. Just, I just thought you were obsessed with like pus sacks and. It makes me think of that Seinfeld episode where Elaine goes and hangs out with the old lady with the goiter. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. So never got that into Seinfeld. It's like... Uh, you what? Never got that into Seinfeld. It's always one of those things when people talk about it, like, oh, yeah, I've seen that one, but no, I've not seen any of them. I've seen wow. that five episodes, maybe. Oh, I didn't know this about you, Josh. This is actually quite disappointing. It's great stuff, but Seinfeld's... Holds yeah, up. I, I think uh, I tried to get into it a few times, but I just, I just want to watch Friends. <sighs> you mainstream prick. Yeah, I don't know. I, I couldn't get into Seinfeld for a long time, but then when it hit, it hit. I remember yeah. also I watched It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, like, you know, in like 2007, like blackout drunk I was, and I hated it. I was like, this show, fuck, it sucks. But then I watched it sober like a few years later and like oh, something clicked and I, I really dug It's Always Sunny for a while there. It's, uh, yeah, so yeah, you just got to like, you know, you just got to get into stuff like Bluey. My daughter watches Bluey and I was like, oh, but then this one episode and it's just something clicked. and I was like, this is fucking brilliant. And now Bluey is my favorite show. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's read some of these questions here, maybe. Yeah, that's what uh, we got. It's really hard today. What do we got here? StreamYard says, uh, like viewer comments, uh, show up. What is it? Yeah, like viewer comments, show up on a StreamYard. This is an example. Click on a comment. Oh, hang on. That's just from, that's not a real one. <laughs> Classic. We, we got we got Cycle Cleveland saying, hey now. A bit about right. Hank Kingsley. Uh, uh, Hank Kingsley, or are you doing uh, how it's done yeah. there? <laughs> I fucking love Larry Sanders. That's one of my favorite yeah. shows ever. Garden Weasel. Um. Oh, yeah. this it's not, nothing, uh, nothing, nothing to uh, <laughs> Ethan Llewellyn saying happy belated 47th, Josh. It was your birthday over the weekend, Josh. Happy yeah, birthday. My birthday yesterday, uh, not 47, but uh, yeah, yesterday was my birthday. It's all right, it's a nice one. Sounds like a nice one, yeah, it's all right. Uh, 
I, I got you, uh, I, I implored my followers to follow you on Instagram and I got you up to 10K. I got you the little K. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Okay, cool, but that was, um, you know, all I ever wanted. <laughs> well, I, 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 when I got my K, I was so excited. I remember back in the day, like, to have that little K, it just feels like some exclusive club. It feels like some level of success as an artist. For us, those of us that identify as cartoonists mm -hmm. and live the life, you know, the publicity is part of it to get that little K. And when, when you see so many untalented, feckless cunts with nothing to say with the little K, it's like, Ooh, mm -hmm. oh, I arrogantly think I'm better and you want it. So yeah, yeah. congratulations, you arrogant putts. You got it. Yeah. You got it. Nice, yeah. yeah. Hello. Happy birthday for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah What's well, someone here saying, uh, how'd you leave Tasmania? I left on a boat um, with my mother. Yeah, I moved into a friend's garden shed. How do you leave anywhere? You, how do you get out of your parents' house? You go and live in someone else's mother's shed for no rent, full of cockroaches. So what do you, think, you think? So this guy, you think, is someone who's stuck in Tasmania, right? I imagine so. They're asking for tips. Like how do? Or just how do I physically leave? Like I don't understand. Yeah, not, you know, somebody is like, I don't, is it like a? This is a ferry, right? Yeah, it's a big boat. Yeah, an overnight ferry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This person's now going to be this, but thirty-year-old in Tasmania is going to be googling. There's a ferry near me, you know. Like, I'm just picturing them standing at the shore of the ocean, just staring out, just like I just, they see a plane fly by, like oh fuck, and I try, oh yeah. can't get it. There's a massive body of water. How did you leave? But it did take a lot of bravery. I mean, it was tough to move to the mainland. A lot of friends had moved over and like gotten into the hard drugs and came back with their tails between their legs or just couldn't cut it. You know, it's very hip. In Melbourne, compared to Hobart, like a lot of people just. But anyway, I just I, I got the courage up, and my, my friend said I could live in their garden shed. And that's how I did it. Yeah, what have we got yeah. here. Someone says Dread was fantastic, great action movie that really captured the feeling of the comics. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that one. Cycle so clean. What? What's that, Josh? Yeah, yeah, you should watch it. You should watch it. It's Alex Garland. Give it a go. Someone says that Ted Danson was great in Bored to Death. He certainly was. Yeah, yeah, he's great in that. Yeah. He's one of those, like, Steve Martin, who's been old for 100 years, right? Yeah, pretty much. He's been grey for a while. He's been really greying it up. Looks great. I think one of those men that's aged quite well. Um, yeah. And in the category of, like, Dan Klaus has aged quite well. Um, mm. Don't know if Dan watches, but if you're watching Dan, the beard is really working. I'm trying to grow a beard myself right now. Uh, you see pictures of Dan in the past, and he looks quite geeky, but now he looks like a like a, a sexy, peppery Santa Claus. Yeah. Looking good. Um, what's this? Someone's saying, Kevin Smith's going to cry when he hears these disparaging remarks about his films. He is quite a pussy these days. He's yeah. always crying. Crying on Twitter about fucking some bad about, about He Man or something about like you know oh I, I ruined He Man and, and made it shit and now I'm gonna have a cry about it like Jesus Christ. Although he had a near death experience, I imagine it's quite you know connected to that. It really? Yeah, he like he like he, he didn't he have like a I don't know, one of his organs failed. He oh was, gosh. Uh, he died for a couple minutes or something like that, and then what? now he's like now he just cries all the time. <laughs> he lost a lot of weight um yeah that's connected to him almost dying i think right well i hope he's doing all right i think he's got a daughter and so are a couple of kids or something so i hope he's doing okay seems like a decent enough guy yeah, we'll try and get him on yeah we'll try and get him on the comic book man himself um and yeah, there's more uh more questions here but What's this? Um, here's someone it's cycle cleveland again it's, uh, should i go and see dan Clowes at cxc what do you do when you meet a cartoonist at a con? Shake their hand and say, no, well, don't touch their hands, um, first of all. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't touch. Um, don't, don't look, but don't touch. I've always been shit at this. I met Dan at, a, like, at Quimby's sign-in, and I just like completely blanked and said nothing. It's like, it's like a, that minute felt like, I don't know, like eight minutes. I'm, I've always been shit at that, just like the sign-in thing. But I can go up and talk to a cartoonist, you know, just like, as a human being, but like behind the, like going up to someone behind the table, I just, you know, weird power thing. I'm shit. I'm really shit. Yeah. yeah. You mean like on a, like not going up to a signing table, you mean like behind the table, just like casually, how you doing? No, just like just going to get stuff signed. I'm just really shit at that. 
yeah, I still, I feel a bit weird about it. Like, you know, like, I felt, I felt like Chester Brown intimidating, you know, I was in line with like Chip Kid, you know, I was like, oh, I'll line up and get this little drawing from Chester. But yeah, I don't know. It felt kind of like intimidating. And like, but then other people, it's just like, you know, I have no respect for you at all. So it's, uh, it's easy to talk to you. I can just like, you know, yeah, it's all a over you. I, I say, just go up, say hello, and then rank all their books from like beginning, <laughs> like best to worst. I was like, a, you know, People, people like that just let them know from best to worst what you think of each book yeah yeah no, I, I, yeah, I like to have a chat you know i generally spend like a you know three to five minutes with each person i think as i doodle in their books and ramble at them i take too long and then the bookstore has to ask me to leave because i've taken too long like and it's nice to have a waffle there looking pissed at you. Hmm? and then bill griffith stands there looking pissed yeah looking sad getting angry that you're not but elder abuse yeah. 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 Oh, jesus yeah but yeah anyway yeah i don't know cxc i reckon dan will probably have a pretty big line uh, partners and son that's going to be fucked so, yeah this is klaus touring like uh my wife's yeah. going off with him to new york and to partners next week uh it's gonna be nuts the last time i saw dan sign was at meltdown and uh bunch of cancelled actors were there and it was crazy it was like 300 people around the block so partners and sons is going to be a, a wreck that's it's going to be yeah hardcore. yeah oh me thinks not not even bother going it's just going to be so fucking yeah clusterfuck i'd imagine but uh i don't know get on down there and you know go and touch dan's hands or something um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, don't touch his hands. It's, you know, these are precious weapons. Every cartoon his hands are very precious. Don't go near them. Don't touch I them. Actually, Freak out. Um, well, when I went to that Quimby signing, I was like struck by how much his hands look like the way he draws hands. And ever since then, I'm always like looking at cartoonists' hands to see if they draw their own hands. Oh god, yeah. I hope, I'm terrible at drawing hands, so I hope I don't have hands yeah, the way I, I draw them. I don't really draw my own hands. I don't think you do. Um, I just can't draw them. <laughs> I need to actually look at my hands more like, oh, that's how they function. Oh, that's how they move and that's what they do. But I'm too lazy to look down. I just can't be bothered. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, we should wrap it up perhaps, Josh, and uh, keep this yeah. one short and sweet. Sounds good to me. I don't know. Someone's yeah. talking about Spanish goiter. But yeah, last word there. Goiter's coming out in Spanish. That's very exciting. The French goiter right now. People on the radio in France are talking about French goiter. Yeah, you can get that from uh, comicbook.fr. No, you can get it from you can get it from Amazon.france. Yep. And there is a Spanish one coming from La Cupula. That's fantastic, Josh. You're really dominating the uh, the European uh, markets now. It's crazy. Yeah, tried America, failed Europe now. <laughs> So the you're like the Jerry Lewis of uh, of comics. So it's huge in France. Oh, yeah, yeah. Inexplicably beloved. Uh. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Go out and check out Funny Pages. It's a great movie. Check out Dread as well if you're into some more mainstream fare. You know, it's fun to watch some mainstream stuff instead of all this uh, sort of puffy, wafty avant-garde shit that we're always waffling on. Sometimes you just want to watch The Guardians of the Galaxy with a talking dog. And just have a yeah. good time, get a bit high. It's lovely. All right, Josh. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. We're gonna have another manga chat going up tomorrow. So um, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Bye. <laughs>